friends. My name is Rainy. This is Rainy Day Reads. And if you are new here, welcome. If you are an old friend, welcome back. <laughs> it has been quite a little bit since I have recorded a weekly update. I didn't film last week. No particular reason. I just, I think I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and really the best times for me to film are on the weekends and I just forgot that I needed to film a video <laughs> and then the the week came and I was you know tired at night and it was kind of gloomy so I just I didn't film <laughs> so um but that means that I have a lot to talk to you about today so Grab yourself a beverage. Uh, as I'm filming, it is only about 10.45 in the morning, so we are having a cup of coffee. <laughs> so, in, in this very lovely springy mug. And I don't think, can you see? And the inside is purple. <sighs> That's delightful. That's my favorite color, FYI. <laughs> I think what I am going to do, and I'm just kind of you know, spitballing as I sit here, is I'm going to do the crafty segment first. So all you that are here from floss tube and knitting can um, watch right from the beginning. And for my booktube friends, I will put a timestamp down below if you are just here for the bookish content. And I will definitely try to remember to do that this time because I'm still learning to do the timestamp thing. And, and I quite often say I'm gonna do it and then realize later that I never did. <laughs> so I will definitely remember to put the timestamp for the book material down today. So without further ado, let's go to the crafting. As you know, I have a main focus project that I have been working on, well, pretty much since October of 2020. <laughs> and for a while, that was my only cross stitch project. And then I got sucked into floss tube and I started buying more patterns. And I just, I have a lot of things now. But the, uh, the focus project that I have, uh, that I have a rough deadline of finishing by October 1st, 2021, is Alice and the Flamingo by Mrs. Pagodi Arts on Etsy. Of course, she will be linked down below. She does a lot of literary uh, cross-stitch patterns and embroidery patterns and, and everything. And they are, they are full coverage and they are big, but they aren't like difficult, if, if that makes any sense. They, they are time consuming because they are full, uh, full coverage. So like, don't be, um, don't be like me and go back to cross stitch after years and years of not doing cross stitch and think, I know how to cross stitch. That looks easy. I'll do that. And then a year later, you're still working on it. <laughs> don't forget the cross stitch takes a long time and it takes way longer than it looks like it's gonna take. But unless you're a super fast stitcher, which I'm not, but anyway. So I have been, I have a, I have a rough goal to finish three to four pages of the pattern each month, which in May for um, Stitch Mania or Stitch Sania, as I did, uh, I, that roughly came out to about 200 stitches per day. So in June, I was a little burned out. So I decided to do the pages on the end of the pattern that were only like half page patterns, but it would still work for my three to four pages of pattern per month because I just counted out how many pages, divided them by how many months I had left till October 1st, blah, blah, blah. So this still counts. <laughs> So as of last night, I completed, or well, very nearly completed, or I'm going to call it completed, <laughs> this entire strip down the side of Alice. And that is, that 
translates to three pages, three pages of the pattern. Why did I do this? This is not air quotes. This is three. This is air quotes. <laughs> oh goodness. So, <laughs> um, but this, uh, I am really getting excited about getting to the bottom section because her dress will start coming out and the rest of the flamingo. And I just, I really am excited about it. Oh, and I bought this Q-Snap on Amazon. It was in a pack of two, and this is an 11 by 17, I believe, was the was the uh, dimensions that it said. Um, so I thought, wow, it's gonna be like super huge. And it's really not, but the effect is nice because now I can show you basically the full pattern. There's a little bit on this side here that is rolled up in the Q-snap, but um, but it's basically just uh, the uh, another section of trees. So um, so it's basically, the you get the effect of most of the pattern. So now I can show it to you. And I also don't have to remove it from the Q-snap as often and try to get it back on there. So, so yes, this is the progress on Alice. And also, I don't know how much that you have seen of this progress beforehand, but I had a lot of extra fabric on this piece because I, my original plan was to wrap it around a piece of uh, cardboard, basically, that was um, the back of a picture frame that I already have on my wall. And I believe the picture frame is about 19 by 21. <laughs> uh, and I forget how big this is, but it's not, not that big. Uh, so there was a lot of extra fabric. But because now I watch a lot of floss tube, I have decided that I think what I'm going to do is, um, is finish this, just the, the pattern, um, portion and, and take out all that extra fabric that's on it and then mount it with uh, magnets to that form because then as I continue to stitch things and I'm sure that I will want to stitch other literary patterns, I can switch them out as my mood strikes me. And I have two of these frames. I will try to remember to take a picture and, and pop it in here. Uh, of the two frames. And so I have this one already started. And then as of October 1st of, of this year, I want to start the a Jane Eyre pattern by the same artist. So they are going to be companions, but the Jane Austen, or Jane Austen, did I say Jane Austen before? Jane Eyre. The Jane Eyre piece is slightly smaller than this one. So I think that that will work out nicely if I can maybe somehow mount it and put like some and like make layers or something i've been watching videos of finishing work and i think i can do it <laughs> we'll see <laughs> but that, it's a long time coming i mean i still have all of this <laughs> to do <laughs> and some up here that i never did this is just white that i've never done so um but yeah i have uh interesting new plans for how to finish this. So it's giving me a little extra motivation to keep working on it. And my next whip that I have been working on since Stitch Mania or Stitch Sania is um, the Walk Fast pattern by Lindy Stitches. And this is a Rose Nyland quote from the Golden Girls. And I just think that this is hilarious. My friend Sarah from The Bookish Knitter has the same pattern because we both enjoy the Golden Girls. She is more of a fan than I am, <laughs> but um, but I love them too. I just don't watch it over and over again. But, um, but I have been working on this pattern since the beginning of May for Stitch Sania because uh, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches is the creator of um, Stitch Sania. So I thought it would be fun to have one of her patterns in my rotation. So, the one thing, okay, so first of all, I'll show you my progress so far, and then we'll talk about what I've changed. So here is my progress so far. I'm sorry, I, I, again, with not having the, pr 
proper uh, backing thing so that you can't see through it. <laughs> but I finished the hand and I'm now on to the, uh, the leash that will be uh, containing the herring. <laughs> so I'm really liking how this is looking. Now, what you will see that if you notice that from the pattern before is that the hand is much lighter. So if you can see from this pattern, her the hand that she um, charted is in a lot darker fab or floss. But I decided since it is just me in my house and uh, obviously I'm very pale, <laughs> I wanted to have a, um, a skin tone that matches my own. So I consulted with Sarah from the Stitch and Mommy and because she does a lot of Mirabilia pieces that are um, ladies that have different skin tones and <clears throat> she told me to use DMC or she suggested, she didn't tell me, she suggested DMC 745 and I think that ended up being a perfect fit for my skin tone because let's see if I can see yeah I think it's pretty pretty good pretty on point <laughs> except you can see my veins <laughs> uh, but yeah so I'm really pleased with it it's taking me oh and this okay I'm still a new floss tuber so this is done on 18 count picture this plus Ada in the colorway vel vellum. Oh yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And this is very floppy, I like it. But it is does make it a teeny tiny bit harder for me to stitch. I'm used to the, to the thicker Ada fabrics. <laughs> so it's a little bit more of a struggle, but I put it in a hoop. So those are my only two cross stitch whips that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks since we talked last. However, I did do a little naughty thing and I bought, I don't know if I talked about this in our last, in our last episode, but I bought a new pattern and I started stitching it. <laughs> and that pattern is the Night Cafe by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I forget, I forget off the top of my head who the artist is but I will put all that information down below. And I got the inspiration to do this piece from Shiloh at uh, X Stitcher MD, who is doing a bigger piece that is a couple, but it's got, it's by the same artist and it has the same style as this with all the multiple colors in, in the sky. And I really just love it. I think it's beautiful. So I grabbed the Night Cafe Mini so that it will be about nine by nine when it is done. And let me show you my start. So this is my start. <laughs> Not a whole heck of a lot, but I will say that even though that doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot, it's like probably close to 500 stitches. <laughs> Maybe not that much. I don't know, but it's a lot of stitches. Um, I This is done on 28 count. Um, oh, shoot, I forget. Uh, I'll put all that information below, but it's 28 count fabric and it's pre-gridded. So I believe that if I wash this, that it will come out later. But I, I, I mean, it's going to be a full coverage piece. I don't know if I'm really going to need to worry about that. But, um, but yeah, I, I haven't really settled on a style of stitching that I'm going to do with this. I thought that I might do diagonal stitching, but then I cut my floss way too long because I started trying to do the thread drop idea so that I can just pick out one piece of floss and not have to like rewind it on bobbins because I've always done bobbins before now. And I really like it, but I'm still learning and I, and I made my pieces of floss way too long. So uh, for the moment, I am doing cross country uh, so that I can get like all of these threads 
<laughs> you know, kind of woven in. I'm, I'm not doing like extreme cross cross country, which I guess is doing the doing one color throughout the entire piece until it's done. I'm not going to go there, but I'm trying to like stay within the top section and like at least get most of it done. And um, and I don't like parking, which is where you pull out your floss and you know just kind of leave it hanging until you and go to another one I don't really like doing that so I'll do that for like one or two threads but I don't like to have a ton of them going uh, at one time so I'm just gonna try this cross-country method for a while I think and see how it goes um yeah but I am doing this one over one full crosses I did start in the very corner doing two over one full crosses by accident. I was going to do two over one half stitches, the tenth stitch, but completely forgot about it and didn't realize that I was doing it wrong until I was like pretty full in. And I was just gonna continue going that way, but it was getting too thick. So I consulted some people and they told me that they didn't think I was far enough along that it would show if I change to one over one full crosses. So, <laughs> so that's what we're doing now. So, um, so I might work on that tonight. I haven't worked on it in a couple of days because of Alice. So I might work on that one tonight. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But I'm excited to see it uh, start coming to life. Because every time I see Shiloh's and her progress, I'm like, ah, oh, I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I really need to get to this and the last stitchy thing that I have is a haul but it's just one thing <laughs> but you guys are getting me I mean there was a day when I only did one thing at a time and now I have like 10 patterns and like I haven't really started all the things but I have a couple languishing whips still and a bunch that I still have to start <laughs> But I, like I said, I had been watching some finishing videos and I um, had had watched Priscilla and Chelsea uh, from Stitching with the Housewives a, a couple of times, but I hadn't subscribed yet. Uh, but I stumbled upon a couple of their finishing videos. And so I I subscribed and I started like kind of re-watching some of their, their videos or watching some of their backed videos. And they were talking about doing patriotic stitching. And I have been thinking that I wanted to do some kind of door hanger uh, or like a wreath or something for stitching, um, so for seasonal things. So I decided that I was going to do a patriotic stitch. I'm not sure that I will get it done by this 4th of July because I don't really have that much longer until then and I would have to finish it and everything but I wanted to at least start something so I picked up Land of the Free by Tiny Modernist just this morning <laughs> so I um I think I'm going to do it on 14 count Ada because in the Etsy item description it said that if you do it on 14 count Ada it will come out to about six and a half inches square and I think that that would be a decent size for a door hanging. Um, it might be a little bit small, but if I, again, do like the layering technique that a lot of people do, I could probably build it up to be, you know, slightly bigger and maybe a little bit more to scale with my door. So, but first things first, I need to stitch it. So I, I have some scraps of uh, 14 count Ada so hopefully I have enough that it will be um, six and a half and a little bit more, you know, obviously for the hangover. Uh, I haven't checked yet because I just sat down and started filming. So, but I'm very excited to stitch that. And I think I will stitch that or start stitching that tonight, assuming that I have the correct floss, which I should, at least some of it, <laughs> I would think. <laughs> So yeah, that is all of my stitching for this week. And now I just wanna show you my progress on my white horse sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Okay, so 
this poor sweater has been languishing for a little while since I got into the whole cross-stitching game. But I'm still really excited about it. I've tried it on and it does fit. It's a little bit tight, but I think we can make do. It just isn't quite as flowy as I would generally like it to be, but it still fits, it still goes on, so it's good. So this is where we are at the moment. I am actually to the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater. So it's going to be, actually it probably won't be cropped. I think it's supposed to be cropped, but I didn't really want it to be that cropped. So I, I did like about an inch longer than it called for and then I started the ribbing and I'm gonna do about two inches of ribbing. So, so yeah, there we go. And it's a little wrinkly because it's been in my bag, <laughs> but it looks like it's too small, but it does stretch. So, and I'm hoping to lose a tiny bit of weight over the summer. So, <laughs> so we'll see. But, so yeah, that is my only uh, knitting whip at the moment. I had started a sock, but I tried a different technique. I tried the heel flap and gusset technique instead of the fish lips kiss heel that I like to do and I didn't like the heel flap and gusset. It's just, it doesn't work with my brain. <laughs> so I have to decide what to do with it because um, I, I was just doing it with some scraps and I don't know that I have, if I rip it all out, I don't know if I can, can get a sock out of it. <laughs> so we shall see, but I'm not even going to show it because it's hardly, it's hardly even anywhere near done. So and it might get ripped out. Okay, so that took a long time to get through all of my crafty projects, but now we can move on to the books. I so I feel like I have been reading a whole lot lately, and I have been because I've been listening to audiobooks while I do all that stitching that I've been working on lately, but when I looked back at my Goodreads, I really only finished two books in the last two weeks. That seems odd. <laughs> but anyway, let, let's talk about them. So the first book that I finished in the last two weeks is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. And this was the group read for the World Book Day book battle that uh, Kate Howe put on and that I was a part of for the, um, for the battle. And I sadly lost, but uh, as you will see, that did not affect my reading at all. <laughs> um, but Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day was was really different than I expected it to be, but it was it was fun. It was a good, uh, just, I don't know if I would have called it cozy necessarily, but it was definitely funny and, um, and like kind of exciting to see the antics that Miss Pettigrew got up to during the course of a day. She was a, she's like kind of a dowdy governess that they, they keep referring to her as being older, but we we kind of agreed that she was maybe only in her late 30s, early 40s. Um, and she gets into the situation where she thinks she's going to apply for a governess position uh, at a kind of at a fancy house. And it turns out that it's this lounge singer and uh, her various boyfriends. And, <laughs> and it's just like, really like, you know, she's, Miss Pettigrew is clutching her pearls. She's very offended by this woman and the, and the different boyfriends that she has coming in and out of her house. And, um, Miss LaFosse is, or LaFosse um, uh, is how, uh, is the name of the woman. And, uh, but they, these people take a really instant liking to Miss Pettigrew and they basically give her a makeover and take her to a party in the middle of the day and there's lots of drinking and lots of uh, scandal within the course of 24 hours <laughs> and, and it's really funny and I don't know why 
I thought it was getting going to be something different than it was. I was I was kind of taken aback at first, but once I settled in, I was really enjoying it. So, and we had a Zoom discussion. Um, I forget what day, the twelfth, June twelfth, and it was really fun to get to discuss it with a lot of a lot of ladies and. Um, and I'm really glad that I read it, and I'm glad that it won. <laughs> but while why I say that uh, losing the World Book Day book battle did not really affect my reading is because I still read the book that I chose for uh, the book battle, and that was Thrush Green by Miss Reed. And I decided to buddy read this with my friend Janelle from Too Fond of Books. And she was part of the book day battle as well. And we read it just over the course of this past week. She wanted to read it for the Golden Girls Readathon, which I completely dropped the ball on. I totally forgot about it. And um, so she has already finished it. I still actually have three more chapters left, but I feel like I have a pretty good um, grasp on what is going to happen in this book. And it it's just very charming. Um, it was a little slow getting started for me. Um, once I kind of got into it, it was it's just, I feel like this book was kind of a setup book for the rest of the series. Uh, it goes into talking a lot about the different characters in Thrush Green, but they definitely later on in the book get up to some interesting things and and it it kind of becomes a little less cozy, but there are there are just fun characters in the form of carnival workers and that come into the village once every year on May Day and just the the relationship they have with the villagers of Thrush Green. There is a charming doctor and his wife that I love so much. They kind of remind me of Father Tim and Cynthia from the Mitford series. They're just very sweet. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, I love them a lot. So I definitely am glad that I read this book and I'm glad that I read it with Janelle because it was our first buddy read together and it was lovely. And I'm so glad she was feeling up to doing it with me. So for many reasons, I'm glad she was feeling up to doing it with me. <laughs> but um, so yeah, those are actually the only two books that I finished this week. And I mean, and by finish, I mean, I will be finishing Thrush Green today after I'm done filming. But then I'm also working on reading the play Henry V with my friend Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading. She is the wife of one of the hosts of ShakeTube, or formerly ShakeTube, now is going to be ShakeTember. And I am one of the co-hosts of ShakeTember. And we have decided that we feel like we need to read more Shakespeare prior to uh, ShakeTember <laughs> so that we can kind of feel a little bit more knowledgeable of, of that particular playwright. So we are reading Henry V. I really am enjoying this one. I didn't so much enjoy the uh, two Henry the Fourths that we read. Uh, they were just a little bit more chaotic, I thought. Um, but this one, I just like the characters better. Um, there seems to be less characters and a little bit more of a central plot. <laughs> so, and, and it's a little bit easier for me to understand. I don't know if I'm just getting into the history, um, the history plays a little bit better, like how they flow uh, at this point, or if it just literally is easier to understand. But um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, but we probably have a couple of more days. Uh, we're reading about an act a day. So um, I probably, I think I'm on act four today. And there's usually five acts in Shakespeare. So I probably have a couple more days of reading. I don't know if Kelly's ahead of me or not. I think she is. <laughs> but oh well. And I'm also still in the middle of reading The Wreath by Singrid Unstadt which is the first part in the Kristen Lovrenstadter trilogy. And I have been reading this with um, Danny from Spinelli Speaks and Jeanette Paulson, who's a commenter of ours. And uh, it's, been, 
it's been a, a very enjoyable experience. This book is bonkers. And <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that happens in this very short book, and I am really enjoying it. Uh, we have one more section to read in the wreath, and technically should be done with it by tomorrow. I will probably be late to that party <laughs> since we have Father's Day plans. Uh, and I haven't even started this section yet, but it is a pretty fast read. So, and I've been listening to it, so, uh, it won't take me long to read if I just sit down with it and maybe get some cross-stitch action out and just listen to it. But, uh, I will probably finish it on Monday. And then I've also been reading Les Miserables by Victor Hugo with Felicia from Little Prairie Library. And we are both way behind in our schedule that we had planned for ourselves. But, but that's okay. We're, it, like I said, we're being very fast and loose <laughs> with this. So um, I figure as long as we get, you know, partly done with what we said we were going to do by, by the end of June, we'll be fine. I mean, there's no police. We're, we're just doing what we want to do. So, um, but I want to at least try to finish the second book because it's, it's broken up into books and chapters. So uh, I think there are eight chapters within the first part. <laughs> there, wait, let's see. There are five parts, eight books in the first, in the first part. And I don't know how many chapters within this book. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I started it. I need to buckle down and finish it. So, oh, and I wasn't even t thinking about all of this, but I have been reading some of this stuff for Pastoral June, which is a readathon that is hosted by my friend Angie at Literary Labors and uh, Summer from Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, and I will put their channels down below. Uh, and the books that I have read for that so far are Thrush Green, because that's definitely pastoral. And uh, also The Wreath is also definitely pastoral, because it's it's set in Norway, in like medieval Norway, so it's there's no city <laughs> involved in this at all. So, so, so far I've read two things, or am reading two things for Pastoral June, and I am loving it, but I need to get some more books in for that readathon. Um, the other readathon that I didn't do quite as well on um, is the Categorically Romance readathon that is hosted by my friend Sarah over at the Book of Schnitter. I am currently reading one book for that, and that is His Second Chance Family by Ray Ann Thane, and I am really enjoying it. I'm listening to it on audiobook, and that's another one that if I just buckle down and get some cross stitch and listen to it, I will finish it. But I just, I always have like one week in a month where I'm just like, sure, we'll just do all the buddy reads that week. <laughs> and then I'm like, why don't I schedule these out a little bit better? <laughs> so sadly it got pushed aside and then I realized like, oh, hey, the readathon's over on the 20th. I should have read more. So... I didn't plan very well for it, but I am really enjoying it. Um, it is about a, a two widow, a widow, a widow and a widower <laughs> um, <clears throat> that knew each other in their past. And the one woman is coming back with her children to live in her old hometown, which is a seaside town, which would also count for pastoral June. And um, it's just kind of about breaking through the grief uh, and, you know, starting over again. And so far, I really am enjoying it. I think uh, in the end, I will really like it. I just have to buckle down and finish it. That seems to be the story of my life. <laughs> so friends, that is everything. That was really long, but yay, my camera never shut off this time like it did last time. So yay for that. My coffee though is kind of cold. <laughs> so I'm going to go give it a warm up and start editing this. And then I think I will start my um, my Land of the Free cross stitch so that maybe I could have it done by July 4th. I doubt it, but, <laughs> but we will give it our best shot. Um, so anyway, I hope you are having a wonderful 
weekend. And uh, if it's Father's Day where you are, I hope that you have a fun Father's Day. If um, if your father is no longer with you, I, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to you and, you know, maybe, maybe just do a little something to remember him by tomorrow. So, uh, but anyway, I will talk to you all hopefully next week if I remember to film next week. <laughs> all right, friends. Talk to you later.